welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be going through some of my fall recommendations okay so we're going to start off with some dark academia and thrillers and then we're going to head into romance then we're going to go into fantasy and then we're going to end off with some kindle unlimited books that i've read and yeah so let's just get straight into it one of my favorite thrillers that i've read this year has been sharp objects by jillian flynn this is a really really fast paced book it's only about 200 pages or so and it basically follows our main character camille as she goes back to her hometown to report on a specific case. There's been a murder in this town and now like another little girl has gone missing and she's a reporter so her boss has sent her back there to go report on it and a lot of weird weird things are going on. There's definitely a lot of spooky creepy vibes coming from her and her family so literally the entire time you're just wondering who could have done this. It's a lot that's going on. It is very fast paced and it's definitely one of the better thrillers that I've read. The plot twist definitely got me. It's not like one of those ones where you can't see it coming but it definitely still does take you by surprise and yeah I definitely would recommend this one and I absolutely loved it and I also think I'm just gonna not go over star ratings just because I don't actually remember a lot of them and I think I would confuse myself trying to do that. But anyways the next one is kind of a mix between a thriller and a dark academia. It does take place at a college setting in Duquette University. I'm not sure if that's a real university or not. Sorry if that makes me sound stupid. But basically our main girl character Jessica is going back to a school reunion. Basically she wants to show all of her college friends and just everyone how much better she is now. Basically while she was at college her roommate was brutally murdered and her boyfriend ended up getting convicted of this murder and she just doesn't believe that the girl's boyfriend was the murderer so you're following her as she goes back and it ends with a crazy twist. I did not see it coming at all. One thing that does kind of piss me off about this book is there's no knife in this book. Like the murder wasn't done with a knife. It's just kind of like a cool name but yeah so In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. Definitely a good thriller and dark academia book in one. Then moving on to another dark academia book. This is The Secret History. I'm sure everyone has heard of it. I would say when I went into this book, I thought it was a thriller and I was expecting some crazy twist at the end and you just don't get that. It is more of a dark academia. It's more of a case like character study. Basically, it's about a group of, I believe it's five of them. Anyways, a group of students who are studying classics at this specific university. They have a very eccentric professor that only accepts like five of them. You're following them through this journey. I don't want to give away one of the spoilers that happens kind of very very early on. I think it might even go into it in the prologue but I feel like you should go into it blind because it definitely got me at least initially and I really had a good time reading this book. The writing is beautiful. I absolutely annotated the crap out of it because the quotes are just really like I said well written and yeah it's definitely like a more intellectual book you could say because it does go into all the like classics. You know they're quoting Homer and Sophocles and all that stuff so like Greek philosophers. Like I said not a thriller so don't expect some twist at the end. There are a lot of big reveals throughout the book but it's not a thriller in the traditional sense. And then this book I kind of didn't know exactly where to classify it. It is more of a mystery and that's not typically what I read a lot of but I do feel like this would be a really good book to read during the fall which is The Inheritance Games. This basically follows our main character Avery as she inherits billions of dollars from this random billionaire who ends up dying. She doesn't know why, his family doesn't know why, and basically to inherit the money she has to live at the Hawthorne house with the entire family and then she's able to get the money. But to live in this house she kind of has to go through trials. She has a little bit of a love triangle with some of the brothers, which they're four, but she has a love triangle with two of them. It's a lot of just twists and turns. There's many games she has to play. She doesn't know what's real and what's a game. She doesn't know why she got this money like I said and also there's some kind of interventions from the family because they don't necessarily want her to have the money. I will say it is very much YA so there were some of the quotes from the best friend in this book that kind of threw me off a little bit just because they like avoid cussing but then use other like terms instead and that kind 
kind of bothered me a little bit, but it wasn't really too hard to look past. I definitely still really enjoyed it, and it is a really good book if you're looking for something fast-paced with short chapters and a lot of action. And yeah, so that's gonna be The Inheritance Games. Okay, and then so next genre that we're gonna get into is romance, just because I definitely have the most recommendations in the fantasy genre. I am a huge fantasy reader. That's what I kind of started off reading when I was younger, and then also was like the first genre that I went back into when I restarted reading again, like a little bit over a year ago. But I do definitely think there are some good romances that would be perfect for fall. The most recent one that I read was actually The Seven Year Slip. I literally just finished this yesterday. This for me was like a six star book. I absolutely loved it. I felt so, so connected to the characters and I feel like a lot of people would feel connected to the characters. And I will say there is something that I would recommend people checking trigger warnings for. It wasn't really discussed too much, but like I would still definitely recommend checking trigger warnings because you could potentially be triggered. But anyways, this is about Clementine and I don't know if it's Iwin or Ivan. She is a publicist and he is a chef, but however, the main like twist to this romance is that she inherits her aunt's apartment and this apartment is kind of magical. She lives in it in the present, but then sometimes this apartment will like transport her back to seven years in the past where her aunt allowed one of her friend's sons to stay in it and sublet it over the summer. So she kind of all of a sudden sees this guy in her apartment one day and is very confused, but she kind of just goes along with it and allows him to stay there. It is a little bit of a forced proximity. They do have a one bed trope. I absolutely just loved their chemistry. I don't even know how to explain why because there wasn't anything that was super out of the ordinary obviously beside this magical apartment but like their interactions were so mundane yet so heartfelt and honestly therapeutic for the reader. I feel like I learned so much just about myself even. I don't know if that sounds stupid to say. I feel like I got a lot out of it as a reader and I feel like that just really made this book so much more special. That really is the bare bones of what you need to know about this book. It's kind of confusing conceptually before you go into it, but I feel like Ashley Poston did a really good job of making this concept very clear and I wasn't really confused at all while I was reading it. And literally within 30 or so pages, I was so hooked and this book just had a way of getting every single emotion out of me. And yeah, the seven year slip absolutely would recommend. And then another thing about the fall besides just like spooky, scary, cozy vibes, I feel like school is a very, you know, common thing. A lot of people go back to school, whether it be high school, college, or whatever, you know, level you're at. This book is a second chance romance between Grace and Matt, I believe. I'm not totally sure, but this is before we were strangers. And like I said, this is a second chance romance. Basically, they were dating in college and he sees her one day on the opposite side of a subway train. And basically, he just writes a letter to her and posts this on an online forum, hoping that, hope you know, maybe she'll see it. I don't know. I just, again, felt really, really connected to the characters. It does take place in New York, so I feel like that also is very fall vibes. And yeah, definitely one of the better second chance romances I've read and absolutely love this book. And then another book slash book series that I absolutely think would be great to read during fall is The Brutal Prince. I don't know if that's the name of this. Oh, Brutal Birthright is the name of the series, but this book is The Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. And not only is this book and this series perfect, but actually the sister series, I think you could maybe call it, is the Kingmaker series. And that takes place, by the way, these are mafia romances. That takes place at like a Hogwarts for mafia kids. And that was really, really fun to read the whole series. And I think that would also be perfect. I read all of them on Kindle, so I don't have the physical books besides this one. Since this one, I actually got signed. I actually got this one signed by Sophie Lark and actually got to listen to her speak. And I thought it was cool. And I thought these would be perfect for fall because she mentioned she was reading Hogwarts while she wrote the like follow-up series, which follows the kids of these first series. And sorry, I feel like I'm rambling. Like I said, these are mafia romances. This follows Ada and Callum. One is from the Irish mafia. One is from the Italian mafia and it all takes place in Chicago. This is basically a forced marriage to kind of unite the families since they have she accidentally sets, I can't remember if it's accidentally or on purpose, but she sets his library on fire during a party and it starts this whole conflict between the families. Their parents force them to marry as like a way 
to stop conflict. And the strawberries on the front have a very special meaning in this book. If you know, you know. I'm not going to tell you guys. You'll just have to read it and find out. But I absolutely love these characters. Ada is just like a really strong female character. Doesn't take shit from anybody. And yeah, these were really fun and I think you guys would like them. Okay. And then another book, like I said, school kind of gives me the fall vibes, even though it's not as like cozy or very outwardly fall. This is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. And this was the only only Allie Hazelwood book I've actually ever read, but this follows Elsie and Jack. They're both physics professors and she's trying to get a job where he's kind of like on the board of, so he's has a little bit of a say in the hiring process for her. It is Academic Rivals to Lovers. At the beginning of this book, she is actually fake dating his brother, although you find out a little bit more about that. There's not actually any romantic, you know, feelings between them, you know, luckily, but I think this one was really, really fun. I absolutely loved Jack. He is very, very much swoon-worthy, and I liked how he kind of helped her become more of herself, get out of her shell, and just stop trying to, like, people-please so much. So, yeah, absolutely love this one. Definitely very cute, and it does take place at MIT. Okay, and then the last romance that I'm going to talk about, which actually is the start of Interconnected Standalones, this is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and honestly, I would just recommend any Abby Jimenez romance in general. Something about her writing, and also just the way she integrates like real life problems into her books is just super easy to read but then also very heartfelt and very tugs on your heartstrings if that makes sense. But basically you're following Alexis and Daniel. Alexis comes from a family of really like well-known doctors so her family is very like high class. They care about their social status and he lives on a farm in a small town and they meet one day where she gets stranded, her car breaks down or just has some car troubles and he helps to her. They have really cute banter and it's a little bit of an age gap where she's actually older than he is and it's really just nice to see them. Obviously, part of your world, they're from very different worlds and then watching them merge and be there for each other and like try to get through this like the different social standings that they have was really really nice to see and again, Abby Jimenez's writing is there's just something magical about it and this is actually precedes Yours Truly which is one of my favorite romances that I've ever read so I absolutely would recommend you to read this one first and I think the small town vibes are great for the fall. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the fantasy books, which I definitely- Okay, so now we're gonna get into the fantasy books, which I definitely have the most of for fall. I feel like a lot of us correlate fall with fantasy just as the days get darker, you're in more cozy, I don't know, something about fantasy just seems to go hand in hand with fall. So the first book that I'm going to recommend is kind of bordering horror, honestly. It's called A House of Salt and Sorrow. It's basically a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, which I used to love the Barbie movie when I was younger. I didn't absolutely love this book, but I do feel like the atmosphere of it would be perfect to read during fall and that maybe if I did read it during fall, I might have liked it a little bit more. Basically, you're following Annalie and her 12 sisters, although at the beginning of this book where you're starting, four of her sisters have died. She and her sisters are said to be cursed by a lot of the people that, you know, live in this town. I don't want to get too much into the plot because I do feel like a lot of it will be better if you do go into it blind, but the atmosphere, just think creepy seaside salt mansion. It does take place near the ocean, but I don't really feel like it's at all a beachy book in the slightest. There's ghosts, there's a mystery that you're trying to solve, and basically, she's wondering why her sisters have died in very kind of suspicious circumstances and her and her sisters are kind of seeing some of the ghosts of their dead sisters. Basically, yeah, you're just trying to find out why that's happening. Twist was definitely very, very creepy. Like I said, this book is very, very atmospheric. I don't know how to describe it other than creepy, dark, and I think, like I said, it would be perfect to read during fall. Some of the books that I will say are going to be series, but I'm just going to recommend the first book in the series just because obviously you have to start somewhere. But the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, I did actually start reading with Throne of Glass. Some people recommend to read with this one first or to read Assassin's Blade, which is technically a prequel. I personally really enjoyed reading this one first and I read Assassin's Blade fourth after Era of Fire. And I personally like that better because you do revisit a lot of the characters in that book in the later books. And I don't feel like I would have remembered or maybe felt as attached to the main girl character if I would have read it first 
first, but basically you're following Selena Sardothian in this book. She's in a very bad situation and she gets taken out of it to go fight in this competition to be the king's champion. And basically the king's champion is basically the king's assassin. There's just like a bunch of different tests and each test, basically one or so people gets eliminated. Unless you die, then obviously that's also a way to get eliminated. It's just a really good, super strong individual main girl character and I absolutely love her. And this series is probably one of the best series you could actually start reading. Another series is going to be the Caraval series. I know a lot of people have been talking about the Once Upon a Broken Heart and the Ballad of Never After. I can't remember which one is first, but this trilogy proceeds that and I personally haven't read those books yet but I have read the Caraval trilogy and like I said with the House of Salt and Sorrow one it is just super atmospheric. If you guys have ever been to Disneyland or Disney World or just even like any kind of carnival at night that is what this book gives me. There's a lot of games, there's a lot of mystery. At the beginning our main girl character's sister gets taken and she's playing this game to basically find her sister. I don't want to get too much into the plot again but there's a lot of fun in this book. Stephanie Garber is a very atmospheric writer. She's very descriptive and some people can definitely say it's a little bit too much but I personally really liked it because it really really helps build this world that you're going to be in and yeah a lot goes on. I would say the series definitely gets better as you you know get more into it but I still did really really like Caraval and think it would be perfect to read during fall. Okay this next book I don't know if you would consider it a fantasy. I think it's more mystery but there is fantastical elements you know magical elements to it and that is going to be the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle which I don't know why this name is just so similar to you know the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo but it is we're rolling with it. Basically this book just feels like a game of chess. Our main character basically is transported into different bodies. It's kind of really hard to explain just because you don't even really have one main character because you're living through each of the different characters. Basically you're living the same day multiple times and at the end of this day Evelyn Hardcastle ends up dead. So you're trying to find out who kills her, why does she get killed, and you're trying to stop it by going through the different characters, seeing through their perspective, if that makes sense. It's definitely very fun, it's pretty fast paced, and I think, again, if you're really into like mysteries, if you like the Inheritance game, I think this would be a really good one to read. The next book I know was talked about a lot at the beginning of book talk being a thing, but I haven't really heard too many people talking about it lately, and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. You're following, obviously, Addie LaRue. She makes a deal basically with the devil to live immortally and then as like a trade-off for this deal, anybody that she meets, once she goes out of their sight, they don't remember her until you meet this one specific character and she doesn't know why he can remember her because she's never had that before in her like 300 years of life. You're following just her life growing up. You're going back and forth between present and some of the past and just kind of finding out what it's like to live where literally nobody ever remembers remembers who you are and I just think the writing is really perfect. I really want to read some more of B.E. Schwab's books because I think she just has very much fall vibes as an author and obviously like the entire point of this video I think this book would be perfect to read during fall. It is a little bit slow, it is a little bit more of a character book than a lot heavy book but if you're into just that kind of thing and beautiful writing definitely give this one a try. The next book is also the start of a series slash duology. You can read The Shadow and Bones series before it but I personally didn't. I just heard too many mixed reviews to even bother but this is Six of Crows. You're following Kaz as your main character although there are a lot of other characters in it and he is basically the leader of this gang and he's kind of like a criminal mastermind kind of thing and he's hired to do this one specific job and he assembles this team that he thinks would be able to help him complete this job because it's basically a suicide mission. It's basically impossible and that's why he's the one who's been hired for it. I don't want to get too much into it because I feel like you just kind of have to learn each of these different characters. They each bring a very distinct thing to this book and it takes place in a dark dingy city. It's called the Dregs. It's basically like the slums. There's a lot that goes on. It's very very fast-paced, very action-packed. I just absolutely fell in love with these characters. They're each very distinct but like the found family that you get from them all coming together is just really really nice to read. I feel like the setting of where this takes place and just it being a fantasy would be perfect to read during the fall which sorry I keep saying that but it's true 
that's the whole point of this video. So next is a book that I read kind of recently and that is One for My Enemy by Olive Blake. This is my first Olive Blake book and wow, her writing kind of blew me away, honestly. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. You're following two witch families set in modern day New York City, the Fedorovs and the Anton Antonovas. The Fedorovs are a family of three brothers and their father, and then the Antonovas, I believe six sisters, and then their mother. And there's just a lot of history between these families. At the beginning, you're starting off with a major conflict between them. Uh, it's hard to explain because a lot of this book, I feel like is best to go into it really blindly because that's how I did. And I was just shocked by so much of the stuff that goes on, but all you really need to know is that it takes place in New York City. They're a family of witches. There is insanely beautiful writing. I mean, again, I annotated the crap out of this. The quotes were just like top tier. I absolutely recommend it. And like I said, because it follows witches, I feel like it's perfect to read before Halloween. All right. And then getting into one of the favorites, A Court of Thorns and Roses. If you guys haven't heard about this book, are you even a book? person. I'm sorry. If you guys haven't heard about this book, this follows Feyre and in the beginning she is hunting for her family. They're all starving. She goes into like really deep into the woods, ends up killing this huge wolf and it turns out to be a fae. This is apparently against fae laws. So another fae named Tamlin ends up like storming into her house and saying one of you needs to pay. You have to come back into the fairy realms because she lives in the mortal world, which I mean they're the same thing. It's just separated spatially if that makes sense she basically has to come live with him forever. That's all you need to know. It does start off probably a little bit slow, but it really, really does pick up. And this series is probably just one of the best romanticy series out there right now. I mean, I haven't read all of them, obviously, but there is a reason these series are so popular. All right, and then next, another book that is technically a start of a series. I know there's four books out in it right now, but I have only read the first two because the first two follow the couple that's in this, and then the last two follow a different couple. I personally started the third book and didn't absolutely love it so I just read the first two but this is the bridge kingdom you're following Lara and Aiden Lara is basically a warrior princess she and a bunch of other of her sisters have been basically born and bred specifically to marry Aaron. They're from opposing kingdoms and her father is kind of a terrible person. The king literally raised these girls in isolation with the sole purpose of being essentially sold to this guy to be like a spy and she does some crazy stuff in the beginning that ensures her to be the one who gets sent. It is an enemies to lovers. It is very much enemies to lovers in the like perfect fantasy sense where they actually are enemies. You're basically following her as she kind of gets to know Aaron a little bit more and also his kingdom because she's basically been, like I said, plotted against them her entire life and all she knows are terrible things about them. And also it's taking place in just like this really atmospheric kind of jungle almost. I wouldn't say it's the most fall landscape. Unlike some of the other fantasy books where the actual world itself feels very fall-like, this honestly doesn't really have a season to it. Like maybe you could call it spring or summer, but honestly it doesn't really matter. I just think the fantasy aspects of it are really good and would be nice to read if you're looking for a fantasy book this fall. The last fantasy book that is not on Kindle, I don't remember if I have any actually fantasy books on Kindle, but the last physical book is going to be Fourth Wing. You guys have probably heard a ton about this. This follows our main girl character Violet as she gets accepted into the writer's quadrant. Basically she's been prepared to be a scribe, which is kind of like a historian her entire life, but her mom says nope you're gonna be a writer, which is a dragon writer, and follows her as she goes into the school, has to pass like a bunch of different tests, all while basically being hunted by her fellow students, and this one specific guy named Zayden who hates her mother because his father was part of this rebellion, and her mom squashed that and his father. And yeah, basically dragons, super good. I feel like fantasy is just really hard to describe. There's so much that goes on in them, but then also, like, I feel like they're best to go into kind of blind. All you need to know is that they're really good. The dragons are awesome and a really cool part of this, and it has a lot of, like, aspects of a bunch of different fantasy books that are absolutely just done really well when they're all put together like this. Okay, so now getting into the Kindle Unlimited slash books that I just don't have a physical copy of. Let's, let's start off with the book that is not actually on Kindle Unlimited 
and that is going to be Red Rising in addition to just the entire Red Rising saga. Okay, so this book is a sci-fi. I don't have the physical copy because I actually let my boyfriend borrow it and I forced him to read it. He's absolutely loving it and basically you're following your main character Darrow. He basically starts off as a red which is basically the slaves of their society. It's a little bit hard to explain because there's different caste systems where gold are basically rulers and they've basically been bred over just like thousands of years of kind of evolving into being perfect for their different caste system. So Darrow is a red which are all manual physical laborers. Like I said they're kind of slaves because they don't really know much about the outside world and they're just basically forced to do this really intense work for very little food or pay. Basically something happens to him in the beginning that puts him on this huge kind of revenge plot but then also just like trying to do what's right and save his society. It's very very hard to explain but it's absolutely one of my favorite series that I've read this year. If you don't think that you're into sci-fi I would still absolutely recommend just trying it out because honestly the sci-fi doesn't really come in heavily until the second book and since you've been exposed to it little by little throughout the first book it doesn't really feel super hard to understand or anything but basically this book is a lot about war, war games, society, just like leadership in general like how do you get people to follow you but then also how do you know that what you're trying to do is right for your world all that good stuff it very much feels like Hunger Games and Game of Thrones and all of those like very intense like action-packed books so if you like action I think this would be really good and also kind of politics heavy it's not overly in the first book but you do kind of get little bits and pieces throughout there is a very 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 little bit of romance in this book don't go into it looking for that normally romance would be my main genre but I don't think that if you do only like romance you would be put off from this book so I really would just say like give it a try you really never know if it's going to be for you unless you try it and I really really please guys just read it Okay, also guys, sorry if I literally make no sense this video. I am trying to get used to wearing my glasses again because I haven't worn them in a few months and it's giving me a massive headache. But I also want to keep them on to prevent me from getting headaches from them in the future since I'm back in school and need to be able to you know see if I make no sense that's why and I'm sorry we're trying to work through it here and then the first book that's on Kindle Unlimited is going to be Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young I also really recently read this and this book blew me away honestly they, basically you're following our two main characters I can't even remember their names. I know it's Wynn and Bo. Wynn has like a small hand. Bo has recently gotten his leg amputated. So like that's where the out on a limb comes from. It's really cute. They meet at a Halloween party, which is why I'm saying it's perfect for fall. They meet at a Halloween party and have a one night stand. It is an accidental pregnancy trope, which normally I don't love. Although honestly, who, how can I even really say that? Because I like this book in Reckless by Elsie Silver and those are both accidental pregnancies from one night stands and I think when it's done really well it can be like really well done obviously like I said but basically so like I said they meet at a one Halloween party have a one night stand and basically just throughout this book they're trying to work together as she's pregnant trying to form a friendship and a relationship just from like the ground up basically because they have to deal with such a huge responsibility and I would say definitely check the trigger warnings in this I wouldn't say they're super Super, super triggering but I do think some of the topics might be a lot there's a lot of like medical topics that could be hard to hear and I would just say prepare yourself if you're worried about that but yeah let's move on another Sophie Lark book is gonna be the sinners duet I don't remember exactly what the name of the first book is he's a serial killer she's not she kind of ends up being like his muse he's very obsessed with her I just think the whole serial killer aspect would be very perfect to read during the fall it is a dark romance it is very spicy but I really had a good time reading it and I thought it was a lot of fun. Another book like I said I kind of correlate fall with beginning of school or just like college romances so Say You Swear by Megan Brandy is a really good one. It basically follows our main character Noah and Adriana. It is a love triangle. It takes place on a college campus and it is a sports romance. He's a football player. There's a lot of like intense topics in this book but he, our main character, basically like reads her mind and it was just really endearing and I really had a good time. Okay, sorry, like I said, my descriptions are towards the end are probably just gonna get really bad because my head is starting 
to throb. <laughs> but anyways, another book is gonna be His and Hers by Alice Feeney. Kind of similar to Sharp Objects. It follows our main character, Anne. I believe Anne. We're just gonna call her Anne. As she goes back to her hometown to report on this case, basically the police officer who's working on it is very suspicious of her. They have a little bit of a history. And yeah, that's all you really need to know. It's a thriller. Go in blind, have a good time. Alice Feeney's writing is always a really good time. I do think Rock, Paper, Scissors is also a another good one of hers, but I feel like that one would be better to read in winter than fall just because it takes place in like a mansion surrounded by snow. I do still think it would be a really good one if you're looking for a thriller, but I do think it would be better to read in the winter. Okay, and then the last book is going to be a little, okay, well it's a book, but it's also a series. The Mindfuck series, you can either read it individually if you read it on Kindle, but then also if you buy like the actual thick book itself, it'll just come as one book. It is following our main girl character who is a serial killer and then the guy is an FBI agent. They start dating. She knows obviously that he's an FBI agent and he doesn't know that she's the serial killer that he's currently trying to catch, which is just fun in itself. Definitely, definitely check the trigger warnings for this. It is a little bit gory. It is a little bit hard to read at points, but I do still think the story itself was just a really, really funny time. No, not funny. It was a really in interesting a lot goes on and it's just really interesting to see her like revenge plot as she gets back at people who have really really wronged her in the past and normally I feel like serial killers aren't the easiest thing to root for obviously but you will definitely find yourself if you read this book rooting for our main girl character because she is absolutely like valid in her need to you know take revenge on these people but like I said it is definitely a bit hard to read at points so if you're at all put off from very gory scenes I would necessarily recommend or you can just skip over them although I do feel like there are kind of a lot in this book but yeah my head like I keep saying is starting to really really hurt so I'm gonna end it here because I don't think any of my thoughts from honestly half the video till now are gonna be coherent at all we'll find that out while I'm editing but yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys all in the next one